Hey guys, what's up? Today we've got a highly requested character for my Nightmare Before Christmas series, and it is Oogie Boogie. I even made a little burlap hat and everything. It's great. So if you want to see me turn myself into him, then keep on watching. And before we start, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm just gonna jump straight into it. I've already covered up my brows. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to link a tutorial up here and down below. It is super thorough. It kind of teaches you everything you need to know about brow cover-ups. So be sure to give it a watch. For the skin, I want to color match this burlap. And as you can see, it's very cool toned but leaning towards yellow at the same time. So I'm gonna make a little concoction consisting of four different products. I know that's a lot, but I tested a whole bunch of combinations and this is the best result that I got. So the base of the skin color is going to be the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation in the color Y255. As the shade name of the foundation says, it is Y, so it is a yellow based foundation. And this one is slightly a little too dark for me. This would be my summer shade. I'm taking a bit of that. Then I'm mixing the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color Yellow Corrector and do almost like the same amount as I did with the foundation, maybe a little bit less. And since we're here, I'm just gonna go ahead and conceal any spots that I have got going on. Might as well. And under my eyes. Now that that's out of the way, now I'm gonna take the LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation in the color white. I'm doing about one pump of that. Then I'm going to take the NYX Pro Foundation Mixer in the color deep. And the reason I'm lightening the foundation and then darkening it, this might seem counterintuitive, but mixing the deep with the white, it makes a sort of cool gray tone, which I kind of want, but I don't want it to be gray. I want that cool base, but I'm bringing the warmth with the foundation and the concealer. And I'm just gonna mix that up with my finger. Ooh, there's a little bit too much white in there, I think. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, there's a little bit too much white. I should have used less than one pump. That's really pale. Um, so, I'm going to do a bit more of my foundation and the deep mixer. Okay, that's a little bit better. Oh yeah, see? This gives me a nice, really cool toned base. Mm, matches the burlap pretty well. I mean, the burlap definitely looks darker, but as my base color, um, I want that. And then I can darken it with contour and all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna dot that around my face and I think I'm gonna use a brush to apply this. So as you can see this is almost my skin color. Hold on, this looks really bright. Let me darken it real quick so that you can see what I'm talking about. Is that better? Okay, now the, the image seems pretty dark but now you can see that this is pretty much my skin color but really cool toned. So I just look very, very beige, very like I match my shirt. Is the image super dark? I don't know if it is. I kind of like it like this. I can never tell if the image is too light or too dark. And I actually still don't know what direction I want to go with this look. I thought about doing a cute oogie boogie. I thought about keeping him kind of creepy. I still don't know. I'm leaning towards cute. Like I'm leaning towards doing a girl oogie boogie. Yes, today I did a decent brow cover up because I learned my lesson with Zero. If you haven't watched that video, it's very cute. I highly recommend it. But I did not do a good brow cover up for that look. And then I had the hardest time trying to make my eyeshadow look good over it. And I'm gonna be wearing a hat, so I'm not worrying about my hair. More like a hood rather than a hat. Then I'm also not worrying about my neck because the hood kind of comes all the way around. I kind of want to cover up the brows a tiny bit. I'm just going to go straight in with the Makeup Forever foundation. Whoa, to go over the brows because I want to use that yellow to kind of mask any sort of darkness peeking through. Not that my brows are dark, but the little roots are starting to show. So this will just help hide it a little bit. And then I'm also gonna use that under my eyes just to brighten up that under eye area because I've got a little bit of darkness running there and the yellow helps to get rid of that. 
Just using the rest kind of on the high points of my face. Once that's done, I'm gonna set everything with a translucent powder and this one is the Rimmel Stay Matte Mattifying Loose Powder. I think this doesn't have any color. I really hope it doesn't. Let me try it out just on the edge of my face here and then brush it off. Yeah, no, that's pretty translucent. Okay, we can work with this. Sometimes they say translucent, but they've got like a little bit of color to it. So I really wanna make sure to set my under eyes, especially because I do tend to crease a lot. And then just kind of powder my entire face, which I hate doing because I have dry skin, but sometimes you gotta. I'm also taking some of that on a brush, patting it on my nose and just patting it everywhere to really work the powder into the skin. Oh boy, I look sickly. So as I said, I don't really know the direction I'm going with this, but I do know how I'm gonna do the eyes, so I'm gonna start there first. Since Oogie Boogie is sometimes pictured as green instead of burlap colored, I am going to use some green shades as my transition shade. The eye is gonna be very black, but I am going to smoke out the edges with a more greener tone. So for that, I'm gonna be using the Gemini palette. I want to really make sure that this area is powdered down because I don't want the eyeshadow clinging to anything. And I think I'm gonna start with the color Mochi. Let me see, it might be a little too yellow. I don't know if it's the exact tone that I'm looking for, but I'm gonna start there and see how it looks against this foundation shade. And I'm gonna be doing a very sort of pointed eye. Yeah, this is looking pretty mustard toned against this foundation, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> and I'm kind of using this color to map out the shape that I want. And I just realized that I didn't do any cream highlighting before I powdered my face. Might regret that later. We'll see. Because my face is very flat right now. I'm also going to bring that under my eye. And into the inner corner as well. Once that's done, I'm going to go in with the color Fire OG. Not as close to the edge. I still want that first color to peek through around the edge. So I'm just taking it a little bit closer towards the middle of the shape. And I know he's usually pictured as like a bright green because he is UV reactive. But I thought these olive tones were more fitting with the character and the theme. I don't know, I just think this gives a more kind of like creepy and sickly look. This is giving me like high fashion editorial vibes, which I did not expect from Oogie Boogie, but I am totally here for it. Once that's done, I'm gonna go in with a black and this one is called Bonnie. And I'm gonna take that on a pencil brush so that I can really concentrate where I apply it. And I'm going to make that even closer to the center of this shape. So I want the other colors peeking through along the edge, and I just wanna really darken the middle of this shape. And this black is very pigmented, so you have to be careful with it. So you can take that previous brush and just blend out those edges. You can just get a really beautiful fade by doing that. I'm also taking that black really, really close to my bottom lash line and onto my inner corner. You also want to make sure that the top and bottom corners kind of connect and it's just one fluid shape. And you can take that first brush to just really help blend out the edges. I'm also bringing that onto my lid, but I'm gonna go in with a cream base on my lid so that I can really intensify that black. Now I am concentrating that black right at the very center of the shape, and I want to try to blend it out as little as possible so that it stays very, very black in the center. I am really loving this look, just in general. Like, I would wear this 
out to a party or something. Who knew that Oogie Boogie could be high fashion? Now on my lids, to really intensify the black, I'm going to be using the NYX eyeshadow base in the color black. And it's basically just a cream color. And I'm going to take that and place that directly on my lid. And this is just going to serve as a base for my eyeshadow, which I'm going to pack on top. So now I'm going back in with that same black eyeshadow and just pressing it on top of this base and you can see that that really intensifies the black color on my lid. I kind of really want to wear this look out. Like I don't know what's going to happen to the rest of my face but I'm here for this eyeshadow look. I never do a super smoky black eye but I kind of like it with the green. What do you guys think? Should I wear this to a party sometime? Now same thing on the other side. Now, since I didn't do any cream highlighting, I'm not going to risk it by putting it over top the powder. I'm going to go and do some powder highlighting. And for that, I'm going to use the Lunatic Cosmetics Contour Palette Volume 1. And I'm going to be using this really, really pale yellow shadow here. I want to take it on a very sort of dense brush. And I'm going to start on my brows. I really want to make this brow area seem kind of protruding. That looks almost white against the skin. Uh oh. Okay, I'm taking it on a not so dense fluffy brush and packing that, but also kind of blending it as I go. And then taking it on an even fluffier brush to kind of cover a bigger area. He's got this sort of protruding brow that I just want to mimic a little bit. That's looking a little too white. It just looks like I slapped on some white on my face. I'm not liking that all too much. So, so I'm going to take the Black Moon Cosmetics Orb of Light palette and I'm taking this shade here. It's just slightly darker. I'm going to try to tone that down a little bit. Probably should have used this one from the get-go. I also want to highlight my cheekbones. Oh, this one barely shows up actually. Let me start off with this color and I'm going to move on to this guy. So I want to highlight my cheekbones and he's got a very wide mouth. I'm going to extend my lips, but I think highlighting this area kind of just adds to the look. I'm going to highlight the corners of my mouth, or rather above the corners of my mouth. This is just going to help with the illusion when I extend these outer corners. I'm also going to highlight my cupid's bow area and kind of connect this to my cheekbone highlight. I'm also highlighting my chin. He doesn't have a nose, so I don't really know what to do with mine. But now I'm going to do a little experimenting. To add a bit of texture to the face, I'm going to take a piece of burlap and I'm going to use it as a sort of stencil as I contour. And then I think I'm going in with the Tardis Pro Glow palette. I'm going to be using the powder contour color. And I'm just going to place that there and then contour as usual. And then without lifting that burlap, I'm going to take the Catrice eyeshadow in Go Charlie Brown. It's just a very dark, cool tone brown. I'm going to use that to deepen the contour a little bit. I hope this works. And not quite. Not what I had in mind, but that's fine. I might still do that around the perimeter of my face. I don't know, because why not? I don't want to look like a snake, and I feel like this would make me look like a snake. You know how people do snake makeups and they use, like, stockings to do the sort of texture on the skin? That's what I feel this is leaning towards, and I don't want to look like a snake. So, 
going to soften that a little bit by just blending over it. But I've already started, so I'm just going to continue. Now I think I'm going to take some really light skin colored water activated face paint and I'm going to use the burlap as a stamp. I'm just going to kind of dab the burlap in here and then stamp it on my face over my highlighted areas. Yeah, that looks less like a snake, which I appreciate. Okay, I don't hate that. This to me is looking like a sexy oogie boogie, which I did not expect at all. Whoa, that is a lot of face paint. I like this. I added a bit more water to it to really water it down so I could get a more sheer effect and use it all over the face, kind of. See, once it dries down, it looks pretty discreet. So I'm just intensifying it in a few areas. And then I'm also going to do that with a dark color on my shadow areas. So where I contoured. I'm doing it also right above this brow highlight because I want to make the brow seem really protruding. So this just helps with that effect as you can see. I'm also doing it down the sides of my nose because why not? Then I'm gonna do that around the perimeter of my chin. Hope it doesn't look like a beard. Do I look like a snake? I don't know. Let me zoom you guys in. I just realized you have been zoomed out this entire time. That way you can see the texture a little bit better. I think I'm gonna move on to lips. And I'm going to use this lipstick, which is not Cider by Black Moon. It's a very close shade. It's not exactly a dupe. It's a little bit more yellow than Cider is. It's called Frenchie by Abani Cosmetics. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. They don't have a brand on the actual lipstick tube, which is really, really weird. They just have the shade name. But I'm going to use that as my base, and I'm kind of going to do the same thing that I did for my eyes. So... I'm just going to smudge that out, I'm extending the outer corners. I guess I could have just used the eyeshadow for this, but figured I'd use lipstick, why not? Might actually take a little bit of the Mochi eyeshadow, which is the lightest one, and just go around the edges a little bit. Just to make sure I have a really nice gradient. This look has taken a turn that I did not expect, but I'm kind of liking it. I feel like he's a really different character from the rest. And this makeup has a different feel than the rest that I've done for this series. Okay, I think I'm going to go in with my pencil brush that I used the black on. And I'm not going to pick up any excess product. As you can see, there's still quite a lot on here. And... I'm going to use that to start mapping out the lips. I'm really extending the corners and I'm rounding out the shape of the cupid's bow. The shape of the mouth is similar to the mouth I did on zero. I'm also taking that brush that I used on the eyes to help blend out the edges. I'm going to take a little bit of fire. <clears throat> oh, damn it. I just dug my nail into the color cupcake. I'm going to take a little bit of the color Fire OG and apply that around the edges just to help blend out the black. Now I'm going to take the blackest lipstick known to man and that is Sleepwalker by Black Moon Cosmetics and I'm going to apply that in the center of my lips. See how black that is? And I'm going to be kind of blending the edges into the previous black that I put on my lips. So I'm really liking the way this is looking, but I'm going to do, I got a little gap right there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I'm liking the way this is looking, but he's missing these stitches around his mouth. So I'm going to start mapping them out using the color Mochi on a flat angled brush. And I don't want them to look like teeth. I don't want it to look like skeleton teeth, you know what I mean? 
So I'm not going to make them match the top with the bottom. And they don't have to be spaced out super evenly. And they're placed much farther apart than teeth would be. This looks creepy. Ah, I like it. Now I'm going to take a much smaller angled brush. This is the Essence Precise Eyeliner Brush. And I'm going to take the color Fire OG, which is that darker green. And I'm just going to deepen those lines a little bit. I'm not taking it all the way to the edge. I'm concentrating it near the lips and kind of fading it out towards the tip. I wish he had other stitches on his face, like on his brow area. That would look really cool. Anyway, now I'm going to go in with the black. Just the tiniest bit really close to the lips. Just the tiniest bit of black. Just to deepen those stitches a tiny bit more. This looks cool. I'm really digging this because I did not expect it to turn out like this at all. I thought I was going to do like a cute version. This is definitely not cute. Taking that black on the little angled brush and really extending that outer corner. Still haven't finished off the eyes, so I'm going to go in with the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the color whatever black. And I'm going to be tight lining my eyes. And that means, let me try to get as close as I can. And that means I'm going to be lining my waterline. And I'm also really working that black in between my lashes. I don't want any skin peeking through. And then I'm also going to line my top lash line. Oh, that is the worst feeling in the world. And also working it in to the roots of the lashes. I see a little gap here. See how it looks a little patchy, like it's transferred? I think it's that black eyeshadow base. I think it can transfer because it's so creamy and it doesn't set. I'm just going to pack on a little bit more black just to make sure it's uniform and it is as dark as possible. Mm. Same thing on the other side. So I went ahead and put on my little burlap hat and all this is is a burlap rectangle that I folded in half. And then I stitched it down the back. And then I put it on my head and folded back the front. So it looks like this. I folded it back like this and then folded it forwards. So it would have this little kind of edge. And it just gives, I think, a little bit more interest to the face rather than me just having it all the way back. And it just looks like that. So I just folded it like this so it adds a little bit more volume a little bit more interest it makes a better profile and then you can pull this little edge back and like and this isn't the clip I'm gonna be using I just have it to kind of see where I'm at with the look I'm really liking the way this is looking and I've been debating if I should put on lashes or not I think I am gonna put on lashes not that this look needs it I just think because I'm going like super high fashion and it does look kind of feminine because of the shapes I am gonna put on lashes I'm gonna be using the Lily lashes in the style Mykonos and yeah I think it just adds a little extra something to the look so I'm going to pop those on and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my lashes on and I think this is the finished look. This is way more high fashion than I thought it would be, but I'm not mad. This is a kind of nice little change of pace from the very cartoony looks I was doing for the other characters. I kind of really like this. I don't know, it's like super creepy and I don't know, I just really like it. Um, what do you guys think? It's super simple, super minimalistic got it done in like two hours pretty much and I'm here for it. I kind of wish that I had insects uh, to put coming out of my hood. The only thing I have are these giant kind of horned beetles and I don't think that would work. I wish I'd thought this through. I wish I had little fake bugs to put all over my hood. Oh that would look amazing. Wait, I have an idea. I don't have fake bugs, but I do have these bug earrings that I got at Hot Topic, and I'd planned on using them as like little pins on my shirts and stuff. 
Let me try this out. Let me see how it looks. Does that even read as an insect? I don't think so. I think it just kind of reads as a little golden thing. I don't know. Man, I wish I'd thought this through. Could have gotten a ton of bugs. I mean, this kind of makes it even more high fashion, I feel. I don't know. It could work. So I kind of like these and I wanted to get my beetles, but they're in the other room and the kids are sleeping, so I can't do that. You can't see the little tip of my hat. But yeah, this is the finished look. I hope you guys like this. Let me know what you thought. I'm pretty surprised by the outcome, but I quite like it. This kind of makes me want to do fashion versions of other characters. I think that could be really fun and really interesting. But this was just kind of like a happy mistake. Not really a mistake, but you know what I mean. So I guess that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!